In this video, I'm going to talk about my journey chasing pH. Is a high pH necessary? No. I grew acros for years without paying attention to my pH. I just looked at alkalinity. Is it worth the effort? I think for an SPS tank like this, absolutely. If you're running a softy tank or even low energy demanding LPS corals, I don't think it's that necessary, but it still might be worth your time. So here's why I chase pH in my aquarium. In 2007, when I got in this hobby, the sentiment was pH doesn't matter, chase your alkalinity. As long as you aerate your water so there's enough oxygen for all the inhabitants in your tank, don't worry about the pH. I think that sentiment was mainstream up until about a few years ago. What made me initially chase pH was when I moved this tank from Ohio to DC, it was here for about six months and then I started adding Acropora and I was having issues with RTN, STN in some of my acros on and off for, for several months. I thought with my rock being almost a decade old that it would be cycled and wouldn't be a problem. But every week another coral would start to go. I would say even the corals that I moved from Ohio made the move and survived and grew well for about six months. But then even then, some of the easier acros would just randomly die. I was listening to a podcast and I don't know if it was Sanjay or Mike Paletta. They talked about increasing their pH, solved a lot of their mysterious tissue necrosis issues. I think the sentiment is the pH makes the local microbiome around the coral better and more likely to harbor symbiotic bacteria and prohibit pathogenic bacteria. I don't know the extent to that, but I said, hey, I can build a CO2 scrubber with crap I have, buy some media and give it a shot. So I initially started with a do-it-yourself CO2 scrubber out of an old plastic jar. Now it was a smaller tank than this, but even then I noticed my pH went up and then right when my pH went up, my alkalinity demand also went up. As alkalinity goes up, it's suggesting that corals are growing and putting down the skeleton faster. After a while, the little CO2 scrubber I made wasn't really cutting it, so I bought a BRS CO2 scrubber. And at that point, I stopped having Acropora issues. Everything started growing well. What really sold me on the idea that high pH can improve coral health and growth is every time I'd go on vacation, my pH would skyrocket to 8.4 during the day and only get down to about 8.2 at night since the apartment was empty. And then on my apex, I would see that my alkalinity would drop. So I'd have to increase the alkalinity demand while I was gone. And then when I would get home, the pH would drop and my alkalinity would go up. So I had to scale it back. So the high pH definitely caused an increase of growth. I mean, I'd come home like, hey, that coral hasn't grown in months and now I've got sprouting branches. So without any scrubbing media or calc washer dosing, my pH would drop to about 7.7, 7.8 at night and barely get above 8.0 during the day. And that's because my apartment condo is so airtight that my wife and I and the dog and now a kid being in the apartment you know, we're just respiring so much that the CO2 concentration is always super high. In my line of work, I have access to an indoor air quality meter. So when I bring that home in the morning, we're pushing CO2 concentrations around 1200 PPM, which is high. Outdoor in DC is about 380 to 400 PPM. You want no more than 700 PPM greater than the outdoor. I'm at about 1200 PPM meaning that I'm not getting enough fresh air into my house. But that CO2 concentration in the house will also dissolve into the water and cause a more acidic environment. Now, with that meter, I can open my windows and within about an hour, it drops to about 800 ppm. And then about three hours later, it's down to almost outdoor concentrations. So that's great. But at night when it gets colder, I close the window and within a few hours, the concentrations back up. As an anecdote, at one point during the pandemic, I had like four banana trees and a bunch of plants. And I noticed my pH was a lot higher when I had all those house plants during the day. Uh, but at night, it'd still drop down because at night, plants respire and release CO2 as well. So I'm 
a big proponent of CO2 scrubbing just because it's really easy. So I use like the BRS CO2 scrubber, which is really easy to replace. You just screw off the canister, empty it out, fill it back up, and it takes about three minutes. So because CO2 scrubbing can get a little expensive, especially on a bigger tank, I wanted to try uh, dosing Kalkwasser at night. So it seemed like a no-brainer is a little high upfront cost with getting a doser and a different container, but buying a bag of Kalkwasser is way cheaper than CO2 media. Also, it will cut back on the two part that I use, which I use ESV Bionic, which is a little more expensive than using the bulk stuff. But I was going through an eight gallon kit about every three or four months. So that's about three or $400 in two part a year. Um, so using Kalkwasser could cut back my demand sounded pretty appealing. I calculated my daily evaporation rate, which is just over a gallon in the winter. I'm currently dosing 3,500 milliliters, so about a gallon a day, and my auto top off doesn't even kick on. So as it gets more humid, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to scale back my calc dosing a little bit. My initial plan is to start at 1,500 milliliters a day and then slowly creep up to about 5,000 milliliters per day. I'm gonna keep dosing two part, but I scaled that back and kept an eye on my alkalinity. So after having everything set up for about two or three weeks of dosing about 5,000 milliliters per day, the pH increase was not as much as I expected and I was actually a little disappointed. You can see in my graphs that on a good day, I might bottom out at a pH of 8.0 using just Kalkwasser dosing, but it still drops to 7.9 on many of the days and even less than 7.9 if I have a lot of people over the CO2 concentration in my apartment gets really high. My unaltered pH bottoms out at about 7.75 to 7.8 so a bottoming out of 7.8, 7.9 from just Kalkwasser is not really worth the effort of having this big reservoir full of Kalkwasser. Another dosing setup, another thing to maintain. So I decided that I'm going to go back to CO2 scrubbing. Uh, it seemed to work better and made life a lot easier. Why do I think I'm not seeing the pH bump that many experience or that I expected using just Kalkwasser dosing? I have a pretty bad CO2 issue in my apartment. I don't believe my HVAC system pulls outdoor air and puts it into my apartment, at least not in the winter. I know I have vents that pull air out of my apartment and exhaust them out the building, but since I sealed up my door to make it soundproof, I don't know where air is coming in. I think one of the main problems is that the CO2 concentration is so high at night that when I dose my calc for the day, it might just be consuming all that extra CO2 without really affecting the pH. I think it's maintaining the pH and maybe giving a little bump, but it's not enough to really bump it up high. It's just eating the CO2 out of the water as we're breathing it out as we sleep. I think with the CO2 scrubber, it might do a better job of introducing air that doesn't have CO2 in it versus trying to take that CO2 already out of the water but I've learned over the years not all CO2 media is the same. So the few types I've used, uh, my favorite is the Jorvet Soda Lime. I've also used BRS Media and Ice Cap Soda Lime. I think there's more expensive brands out there, but I'm not sure how well they work. I started with Jorvet based on the price. It used to be like eight or nine bucks for a three pound bag, and it worked really well. Then during the pandemic, it went from like eight or nine bucks a bag to 15 bucks a bag. So I bought like a year's worth from BRS using their brand. And I noticed I did not get as big of spikes and it didn't last as long. It was like a smaller granular type where the Jorvet Soda Lime is almost like pellets. So after that, I tried Ice Cap and it worked better than the BRS. After that, it had been about a year since I used Jorvet, I bought this big jug of it. And then I noticed after using that again, my pH went way higher than it ever had under the BRS. Uh, so I'm convinced that the Jorvet is much better. I think it has a better capturing capacity and it lasts a little longer. Plus it color changes from white to purple. I think ice caps changes that's a little more noticeable, but the BRS says it changes, but through the tinted canister, you can barely tell if it changes or not. And it turns back to white after it's used up. 
pretty quickly. I could always try sodium hydroxide, but I don't want to mess with that in a small apartment and with a toddler running around. So what I've done is I've gone back to CO2 scrubbing using the Jorvit, plus I'm doing Kalkwasser dosing at night only. I've scaled it back to about 3,000 milliliters a day, and since I've done that, I'm now maintaining a pH, I think a max around 8.4, which is awesome. And then at night, I'm kind of getting around 8.2 to 8.15. So I'm gonna to try to keep this up indefinitely. I've noticed that when I went, when I scaled things back, I, I bumped up my ESV two part to about 70 milliliters per day. And then within three days, I was already back up to 100 milliliters. Getting my pH up from both CO2 scrubbing and Kalkwasser dosing has increased my two part demand by about 30 milliliters. That's a pretty significant amount for me. So recently I went on a five day work trip and keeping my pH up. I have two corals that haven't done anything in the last six months. I come home and they now have new little branchlets all over the base. So I'm convinced high pH really promotes explosive acropora growth and I'm gonna keep this going. So if you're thinking of increasing your pH or you're not happy with what you're doing and you're not doing CO2 scrubbing, I highly recommend it. It's pretty easy to do. You just hook it up to the skimmer airline and replace the media as it goes down. I kind of noticed a trend after about five or six days, the pH will start getting a little bit lower every night on my apex and then I'll replace it and it goes right back up. I've tried doing the recirculating air from the skimmer where it pulls air from the skimmer top cup. The problem with that is I got so much moisture into the lines that I had a few inches of water at the bottom of my CO2 scrubbing chamber. I even tried a separate container of air that it goes into before it goes into the scrubber. And I think it was just so humid that it was still causing water to condense inside the scrubbing media. So that's my journey with pH. If you have any questions, comments, or you do anything different that you think would work for me, please drop those in the comments below. Thanks. Bye.